Hey, marketers, welcome to Unprompted, a podcast about AI marketing and you. I'm Pete Housley, CMO of Unbounce. Unbounce is a landing page builder with AI technologies to help you build landing pages and optimize and lots of other very cool AI tools. This week, I'm delighted to have James Thompson co-host with me. James is our AI-enhanced creative director who runs an in-house content and PR shop. James, how the heck are you doing today? I'm great, thanks, Pete. I'm not going to share which parts of me are AI enhanced, but just know that it's the best parts. Just wondering if you had your AI Wheaties for breakfast today, because you're going to need them. I I sure am, yeah. It took me 16 megabytes to finish that bowl, for sure. Nice. So in today's episode, we're putting robots to the test. We're sending off my team of marketing gurus to do a little exercise, which we're going to call Can you not? That's right, Pete. AI is automating so many of our tasks as marketers, tasks that used to take us days, maybe even weeks. It really does make you think, like, are we able to just not do a lot of things we used to, like design, like write copy, strategize? As marketers, are we able to use AI and just not do those things going forward? We're going to hear a little bit about that later. First, What the heck is going on in the world of AI marketing? Wow, I think it's moving so fast. So much is happening all the time. Sometimes it's difficult to keep up. But very exciting time to be, especially in the creative industry, where we have the ability to leverage some of these tools as part of our toolkits. Um, Speaking on behalf of someone who runs a a bit of an in-house creative agency here at Unbounce, Always looking for opportunities to adopt some of these new technologies and tools to augment our processes, get better results at the end of it as well. And I think AI-based tools are no different to that. So I'm I'm really personally excited for the opportunities this gives us as, as creatives, especially on my team, and how we may be able to do more with less and get better results at the end of it out of our campaigns as well. James, I know for a fact in this series, we're going to be exploring a lot about the importance of the inputs in AI marketing and how we do have to structure our queries and our layers accordingly to really get the outputs that we're looking for. That reminds me of a great example out there of some of the best AI marketing that we've seen. And it happens to come from a purpose-driven brand called GoFundMe. And I think most of us are aware of the incredible work that GoFundMe does to be able to help people and communities in times of need with a very, very powerful marketplace platform. They have developed and produced one of the most sophisticated AI marketing outcomes that I've seen in a long time. And with that in mind, James, I'd love you just to tell us a little bit about what they did and how that applies to the world of AI marketing. Yeah, super exciting campaign. They wanted to do a bit of an end of year wrap up to showcase a lot of the great work which had happened over the previous year. So they went to AKQA San Francisco, a big powerhouse of an agency, and worked with them on creating this two minute ad, which had culminated in this big sprawling mural showcasing a lot of that great work. So it could be, you know, Ukrainian refugee families being reunited or pets being rescued from hurricane devastation, all of which was accompanied and represented in this big mural. It's what they're billing as the first AI-generated advertisement, which is unique in itself. And what I I think is really interesting in that it doesn't feel gimmicky. It feels like a really great, compelling ad. I've always loved animation and advertising and spent a lot of my career working for top ad agencies and had produced a number of animated campaigns. And the barriers, always, of course, were the extraordinary expense associated with producing animation and incredibly long lead times, literally months and months and months of production. In this case, I believe they were able to have the production sequence in less than about six weeks, which is unheard of. And the quality of animation is absolutely 
visually arresting. And we talked a little bit about plagiarism in as a risk in AI. In this case, they actually shot models on a white screen and then layered the model over these murals that you just referenced and created this entirely unique animation sequence which just anchored their brand and their fundraising stories. Uh, remarkable piece of work. A couple of the tools they used just for reference were DALI, which is open source AI software and also stable diffusion, which sounds like it did a lot of the heavy lifting in the production process. So at the end of the day, it's this balance between some of these tools and then the human element as well, being able to ensure that it does tell a story and it is effective in the end. I've stumbled across this expression, taming the beast, or controlling the chaos that is AI. And I think our fears, of course, are that we won't have control of the outputs and it's going to be scary or wrong or inaccurate. And I do think that what we're learning as we go through this process is back to the inputs and making sure you're very structured on what you're telling AI or asking it to do. As marketers, it's incumbent on all of us to research the technologies that are available to us, and to explore the many facets that AI can enhance in our life. And that's not just as marketers in a marketing world, but it's also as individuals and humans and how we're all getting along in 2023. I'm looking forward to going on this journey of seeing what AI tools can be. And with that in mind, Today, we've brought three of our finest marketing gurus to the show. Today with me, I have Garrett, Ceci, and Quiva. And team, how about you just introduce yourselves? Hey, I'm Garrett. I am the content marketing manager here at Unbounce. I lead the content marketing function and our team of content creators. In terms of AI, I would say that I was very much a skeptic until super recently, and then, frankly, I started paying attention and actually using the tools. Hi, everyone. I'm Ceci Martinez. I'm the art director in the brand team here at Onbounce. I supervise the art direction of most of our campaigns, and I work with a group of three super talented designers, and... They are super excited about what, everything that is happening with AI. So with the team, we have been exploring and discovering what's happening with these new AI tools like Dali and Mid Journey. Hi, my name is Quiva. I am the manager of marketing campaigns. I am responsible for the omni-channel marketing that Unbounce runs. I'm a bit of an AI skeptic. I very much ad hoc use AI at the minute. I'm not fully convinced that it has all of the capabilities that I need because a lot of my role is to do a strategy, but open to changing my opinion and yeah, ready to be convinced otherwise. So I want to give a creative challenge out here and this is pretty fun. So Unbounce is our company name and we've got a pretty strong culture in and around the brand. Our boardrooms are named after things that can't actually bounce. So we have piano, and we have cinder block, and we even have a boardroom named elephant. So today's challenge is I want to launch a trampoline for elephants so that they land safely when they bounce. So marketing gurus, I am going to give you 24 hours to do a complete campaign around the trampoline for elephants. Oh, God. Oh, boy. So you say, all right, AI, I've got a thousand bucks here, and I want to run paid search, little paid social, a little bit of retargeting, you know, et cetera. And we could see whether or not AI can, in fact, give you a channel plan or not. I mean, we talk about the advantages of AI-based tools in shortening the time frame and augmenting some of those tasks, but it feels pretty tight, 24 hours. But I'm excited to see how the teams tackle this problem, this challenge, and what they come back with. Super exciting challenge, Pete. All right, let's do this. Hey, 
Hey, marketers, we are back. So, Quiva, we gave you and Garrett and Ceci a bit of a task for 24 hours. Before we get into creative development and design, can you just talk a little bit about the process and the framework for the task? Yeah, absolutely. So it has been a very busy 24 hours for the team. We approach this campaign like we do all of our campaigns with a solid strategy behind it. The team came together, we figured out our ICP, our messaging, our product description, product benefits. From there, we went and we defined our channel plan. The team also worked together on creating the messaging for our new product, and Ceci worked on designing all of the different assets that we need for our creative channels. So yeah, we've been super busy on implementing everything. We had no little to no involvement, which sounds like we sat back and did nothing, but there was a lot of work that we also had to do. But yes, AI completely created this campaign and can't wait to bring you through the ins and outs. So that, that was helpful in terms of some of the overall process, but walk us through specifically the workflow now. Yeah, absolutely. So we had no concept of the target audience, product name, product description, product benefits. AI had to come up with all of those things. So the very first prompt, I was using ChatGPT, and I asked it, or I told it that we're launching a trampoline made for elephants who want to be able to jump. So can you create a hypothetical target audience, product name, product description, and benefits? And immediately, we hit a roadblock. The first thing that ChatGPT came back with was that it was completely unethical to make elephants jump. As they are highly intelligent creatures, a trampoline would be completely unreasonable. So it's clear that the ethics of AI were very much coming through, that it's been trained or programmed to just not allow elephants <laughs> to be promoted as a form of entertainment. So you got, you got a full campaign strategy out of it. Tell us about the campaign strategy that you turned over to the creative team. Once we had all of that <laughs> outlined, eventually, we were in a much better place to be able to ask it for creative concept, visual referencing, key message guides. So they were the key things that we obviously needed to pass over to the creative team before they could begin working on the messaging and the ad copy and building the landing page and building the supporting assets. Obviously, the first thing that we needed was a channel or a campaign goal. So I told it we had $1,000 to spend what would be our best use of that $1,000. It advised us to do influencer marketing, and it also advised us to do a social media campaign. It was able to write a press release for this trampoline. It was able to create a breakdown of a channel strategy across social. Everything was incredible as soon as we crossed that initial roadblock. And generally speaking, like, was the quality good? Like, is it as good as you could do yourself? I would say for the most part, yes. And again, I think it comes back to just the nature of the product and the ethics of AI. It was very careful about what it said. It kept referring to fake elephants and had disclaimers at the bottom of every single thing it generated. But also, it's very specific what we were trying to do. In general, the caliber of the content it created was, yeah, absolutely usable. Amazing. Hey, Quiva, I had a question. Obviously, we've managed to create a campaign within 24 hours, which is unheard of. How much different is this to the usual sort of process we would follow um, on the creative team and on the campaigns team? Like how much money are we, would we be saving in theory or how much time would we be saving as well through using some of these AI based tools to create the campaign uh, and also generate the creative from it as well? So our usual approach to campaigns, it would probably take about a week to generate the amount that we were able to generate within 24 hours. From a strategy perspective, it's probably one to two days of looking into the competitive landscape, figuring out what are we trying to do, the product benefits, the long-term vision, all of those things. Yeah, there's a lot of manual work involved, so I can see just how quickly <laughs> AI was able to support and come up with some really, really strong strategies in a way shorter time. Garrett, can you kindly present the creative concepts to us? Can we get a AI-generated drum roll? So what you're looking at right now is the landing page for Elebounce, the only trampoline built exclusively for elephants. 
So the landing page is live. People can go and check it out at podcast.unbounce.com slash elebounce. That's E-L-E-B-O-U-N-C-E. We've got a little logo here. It's a cute little yellow elephant sort of illustration style on this circle that represents the trampoline. These colors, entirely recommended by AI. The headline for the landing page is Elebounce, the ultimate trampoline for elephants. We cut to some supporting copy here. Designed specifically for elephants, Elebounce is the only trampoline on the market that offers a safe and engaging way for your elephant friends to jump and play. Say goodbye to boredom and hello to a new, fun way to stay fit. And you can see the hero image is a very happy elephant (laughs) bouncing on a, a great big orange trampoline. As we scroll down, we get to our key benefits. Elebounce offers numerous benefits that keep your elephant happy, healthy, and entertained. We've got this three-card layout with three benefits and accompanying images. And the three benefits are burn-off energy with a fun and engaging activity, improve physical health through low-impact exercise, prevent boredom and attention-seeking behavior, And at the bottom here, we've got our final footer CTA. Get your Elebounce today. Don't let your elephant miss out on the fun and fitness benefits of Elebounce. Order now and transform your elephant's playtime like never before. And Garrett, I'm assuming you used Unbounce Smart Builder, the AI landing page builder, to do this. And I'm just looking at the structure of your layout and your sections and the simplicity and boldness of your copy This is how I would have advised any of our customers to build a landing page. Like, to me, this is really industry best practice. I'm pretty excited by the quality of the landing page, even for such a fictitious topic. It's kind of mind-blowing what what we'd be able to create in just 24 hours. Well, and, and James, we talk about the inputs and the outputs. And of course, this is one of the first uh, efforts that the team has done. They've been using AI, but to actually, you know, build a campaign with it. Garrett, on the content side, what does the last 24 hours look like for you? Have you found that your process has changed by using some of these tools? Yeah, I think that like, certainly when you give an AI copywriting tool like ChatGPT or Smart Copy or Jasper a prompt, you get content back super fast, right? Within seconds, in a way that you can write a a full landing page or get the content for a full landing page within just a few seconds when it would normally take an hour, two hours longer. I think that the time-consuming part of working with AI is the level of iteration that you need to go through with the AI tool that you're using in that, sure, ChatGPT can give me copy for a whole landing page in a few seconds, but it, on first pass, it's not necessarily something that I would be happy with, you know? So you're applying this layer of critique to what AI is giving you, and you can say, okay, well, this part is good, this part, let's try it again, and it ends up, I, I don't know that it would take as long to create a landing page using AI tools as it would manually, but there is still a fair amount of manual work involved in terms of iterating with the tool, you know, like you're not removed from that process at all. But you do need to prod it along and steer it and provide some of that human direction to hopefully end up with something great. Did you compare the capabilities of smart copy versus chat GBT? And do you have any initial thoughts on that? Yeah, so I use smart copy to write our Facebook ads. And that's really what that tool is for, right? It's for marketing use cases. I mean, we've got templates for a bunch of different stuff, but that's where Smart Copy excels. I think that ChatGPT is great right now for having a conversation in like that iterative work, whereas Smart Copy, it gets to know your business profile. You can set the tone of the ad. You can say like specifically what you're selling and what your brand attributes are. And it'll create content for uh, something like Facebook ads using those inputs. So it's more impactful in a marketing use case. Well, I think it's super helpful. I, and I was what I was interested in some of the landing page copy is, of course, trampolines for elephants isn't a thing that exists. But ChatGBT was able to go to the internet and search trampolines and weight bearing and the fact that it needs a heavy frame. And so it's able to introduce 
almost like scientific evidence, which in just the body copy land wouldn't understand that. So I do believe smart copy is great for building ad copy. But if you do need to do research as a part of what you're looking for, this is where ChatGBT certainly takes things to a very, very different level. And I think we're all getting used to that. And even in terms of search engine usage, I think many of us are now going to ChatGBT versus Google for the exact same reason. And I think that's one of the things that I realized through this exercise is no one tool does it all, right? I think that in terms of actual work that we did, the bulk of it was moving information or content from one AI platform to another. So it's interesting. Like, I don't think it's ChatGPT or Smart Copy or Jasper or Notion or any number of tools. I think they've all got their use cases. Right. And some are better at particular use cases than others. Sessi, I'm really interested to learn about the art direction of the campaign. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you did and what you achieved and maybe describe for us some of the uh, creative assets that you were able to pull off? Yeah, it was interesting because when I started, like, I got very excited because of the brief and I just started, like, experimenting with Dali and then with Me Journey. And I just start playing like with the prompts and all the details. But at the beginning, because I didn't know exactly what we wanted, the results that came back, they were pretty bad. But eventually, when uh, we started getting more information around visual references, the brand colors that we wanted, so I came back with some color codes that we could use and combine. Having all this information, it helped me to provide more details for the prompts in Mid Journey and Dali. What I noticed is, for example, for Dali, the images that came back, they were very real, which was nice, but I felt like they weren't that exciting. And with Me Journey, you can also add styles. So I was like, oh, like show me an elephant with the style of a Wes Anderson movie. And it came back something similar to that. So that was a pretty cool thing to do for the images that we use for the landing pages. The hard part is as an art director or as a designer, is to make sure like all the images are consistent and aligned to your brand. And I believe that's the part where like a designer comes in. I think everyone can make an image now with these AI tools, but a designer will have like the trained eye and will have the knowledge to make sure like which are the images that you want to pick, which are the brand colors you want to use, and so on. What I'm hearing from Garrett, Ceci, and Quiva is that after going through it once, you probably would be even more efficient on a second and a third iteration. I know, Quiva, you and I were talking this morning. You certainly feel a lot more adept at the inputs and the outputs now, having gone through it. Why don't you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that is the biggest challenge. It's knowing what to ask for and how to ask for it. And I think that's something that once you have mastered, there's no limits to what you can do. It's almost a human limitation of not knowing yourself what to ask for. How can you rephrase what you're asking for so the model actually understands? Or, you know, how can you find a workaround to get what you actually want that it's okay with and it's been trained for? In terms of the campaign elements, you talked about social, and I'm assuming we're doing organic and paid social. Tell us a little bit about that piece of the campaign. Yeah, absolutely. After we had gone through the actual overall product and everything to do with it, I said that I have a thousand dollars to spend. Can you give me some like tangible goals for this campaign? And it said selling 50 units of the trampoline would be a realistic goal on a thousand dollar budget over a six month period, as well as a hundred thousand impressions. I think those numbers might be a little bit loose, but it's great to see that it's thinking a breakdown over a channel strategy, given a budget. Garrett, that landing page was really amazing. Can you now walk us through the campaign elements in terms of the ad creative? Yeah, absolutely. What I ended up doing was using the landing page content as an input, asking it to generate 10 potential Facebook ad headline and supporting copy combinations. And that includes uh, headline copy, body copy, CTA. From the 10, I asked it to refine that list into the best three. 
And then we also had it recommend some potential accompanying imagery. Add variant one, the image is a herd of elephants playing on a trampoline together, was the recommendation from AI. The accompanying copy, the headline is, give your elephants the gift of excitement with elephants. Body copy, they won't be able to resist. Elebounce is the trampoline designed specifically for elephants with a durable frame and ample space for bouncing. Order yours today and see your elephants unleash their inner child. CTA is get yours today. Another ad is an image of multiple elephants jumping on a trampoline together with a clear blue sky in the background. The headline is bounce your way to a happier herd with Elebounce. Designed just for elephants, Elebounce is the trampoline that will take your herd's playtime to the next level. With its sturdy frame and ample bouncing space, Elebounce is a must-have for any elephant sanctuary or zoo. Order yours today and watch your elephants bounce their way to happiness. So you can see it was starting to make these connections between ad copy and uh, the recommended images. Incredible. Ceci, would you be able to speak to some of the images which we were able to generate to support this campaign and what that process looked like? Yeah, when I started putting some of the prompts into Dali, I just jumped in blindly. And these were the first results that I got. They were very cartoonish. There's a lot of illustration in there. Then I started like playing with 3D as a visual style, and I got these results. This was Dali. And then eventually what happened is we got all this uh, additional context and information that is so good to have as a, for a creative campaign and as a creative concept. So then that's when we started getting like maybe the images that go, are closer to the end result. We have a happy elephant jumping here and there. It's daylight. The trampolines are in different colors. You can pick one of those and keep like asking them to give you more variants, which is pretty cool. What was interesting is the moment I knew orange was going to be one of our brand colors, I just asked like, hey, can we get an orange trampoline where the elephant is going to be jumping? And yeah, that, it gave me back that orange trampoline. So it's super cool. Like you can do really crazy stuff with these tools. And if you have the eye, you have the experience, definitely you can do really good marketing campaigns. Beautiful. All right, Garrett and team, in 24 hours, you've done campaign strategy, you've done content development, you've built landing pages, you have pushed a paid social campaign live. Do you have any indication of results? You want to see where your thousand dollars went? Yeah, man. So we set the daily budget for our Facebook ads at a hundred dollars. It hasn't even been running for twenty four hours now. What we've seen is close to forty four hundred impressions with two hundred and seventeen clicks. Uh, that's giving us a cost per click of uh, twenty three cents and a four point nine four percent click through rate, which is insanely high. We're running three ads. One variant is accounting for 90% of our total investment so far. And that's the bounce your way to a happier herd with Elebounce ad variant. So we're seeing more click-throughs to the landing page than probably any of us had expected. I guess people are legitimately interested in a trampoline for elephants. The bad news is that we aren't seeing a lot of actual conversions on the landing page right now. And I think this is clearly because people are arriving on the landing page looking for a trampoline for elephants. And when they click buy now or shop now or one of the CTAs, what they get is a pop up letting them know that this was an experiment for a podcast and to sign up for notifications for when the podcast goes live. It violates our rules around message match and ensuring that uh, when somebody clicks a CTA, the next thing that happens is what they expect would happen. Uh, in this case, they're not getting the opportunity to buy the elephant trampoline, unfortunately. Are you saying we need to shift part of our business to selling elephant trampolines now, Garrett? That is my pitch to you, yes. <laughs> So after all of this, I'm interested to hear, Quiva, speaking on behalf of campaigns, can you not? Oh, God. Can I give a half answer? I think you can kind of. 
I think AI as a whole has a ton of benefits and definitely is going to help in the campaign process and campaign strategizing, but it's lacking context. And I think it's lacking problem solving that as a marketer, I think is an innate quality that we have. And it doesn't have yet. I don't think it will always be like that. But for right now, I'm going to say that I still have to. So I cannot not. <laughs> Garrett, content manager at Unbounce, can you not? It's not the first time I've been asked that, James. I think that I could not. I think that I could turn things over to AI and generate pretty decent content on first pass. Decent. But I think think that if you want something of a higher quality, something that like really matches what you're looking for, you are going to spend a fair amount of time prompting and reprompting and like refining those prompts and working with AI to get it to where it needs to be. I could not. I could not. I'll submit. <laughs> I could not. You don't need me. You just need ChatGPT or Jasper or Smart Copy or some AI language model that can generate the content for you. Ceci, as an art director responsible for design, I have to ask, can you not? I want to believe that I'm still needed. Designers are still needed. Definitely from this exercise, I realized that anyone can create an image. It doesn't matter what are your skill sets. I feel where the designer's expertise comes in is when you realize an image is just not the only important thing on a campaign. Like you have to consider brand strategy, brand experience, the usability. The work of a designer is still pretty big. Well, it's good to know that as marketers, we still have a critical role that we do play as we go forward in the overall mix. I'm sure campaign execution will be on the uh, robots' minds going forward. I love how some of these AI tools are keeping us as humans on track. They're reminding us of our ethics, what we shouldn't be doing. I think we've learned a lot as humans from this campaign from AI-based tools. It's been quite educational all around. Well, and I would think as hungry, curious marketers, we're all trying to discover what tools are out there, how they apply. And so I would encourage all marketers in our listening audience to embrace these tools and see what works for you. All right. Marketers out there in the marketing universe, I encourage you to explore the AI tools and let's get smarter together as we go on this journey. It's a wrap. This podcast is brought to you by Unbounce. Most AI marketing tools are kind of the same. That's because they're built on the same generic machine learning models and they get you generic results in your marketing. Unbounce is different. It's trained on data from billions of conversions, which means it gives you content and recommendations proven to get you more leads, sales, and signups. If you're a marketer or just someone doing marketing, you need Unbounce. You can build beautiful, high converting landing pages for your ads and emails, plus get AI copywriting and conversion optimization tools, all powered by more than a decade of marketing data. Get the most conversions with Unbounce. Learn more at unbounce.com slash unprompted.